Greetings, Jedi traders. David here of TradingFibs.com to bring you the technical momentum outlook for week 17. It is April 23rd, 2017. As always, please seek financial advisement when trading with your money, as these videos are for educational purposes only. To support your knowledge in the market, see what's going through my head on any given day or week. Always make sure you have a solid trading plan and always manage your stop when placing a trade. All right, Jedi traders, let's uh, get into a quick recap as uh, we see here each week. Uh, week 16 recap, uh, pointing out some of the highlights of the charts. Let's go ahead and pull up the weekly here. Just when it seemed the market was uh, ready to rally up the market take it back a little bit on the uh, smaller time frames then back upside here as we could see here on the es weekly managing to resume and holding the course upside uh but no not falling any lower than uh the previous really weak session maybe just by a smidgen uh the previous week but uh, holding up eliminating that intraday noise and steady the course in the s p 500 futures um as we head back upside all right next chart taking a look here at the moving averages as in last week's bottom line on the technical momentum outlook for week uh 16 any upside action to maintain its momentum would need to push not only above the 10 period uh, moving averages but the 50 period moving averages as well the nq on the right here which we uh, see price action was able to hold above both of the moving averages, both 10 and 50 NQ, uh, relentless move to the upside. Mission accomplished. The ES here on the left, which struggled at first around the 10, uh, able to f um, hold up above the rest of the week on both Thursday and Friday session. But again, you can see the resistance there at the 50 period moving average. All right, taking a look at the open gaps here. We had a weekly open here. On both the NQ and the ES, 69.25. I apologize, that's the weekly open. Uh, open daily gaps, not to speak of upside as all-time high. Still loom up ahead, but uh, not forming any open gaps as we still have open gaps all the way downside. Um, in each perspective, uh, indexes, charts. All right. And with Monday and Thursday session here, we could see the pop on thursday a little bit of a pop there at the beginning of the week on monday as it held above the weekly vwap uh, the highlight of the week and upside momentum managing to pull away from the weekly vwaps we have the es chart here up on top the nq here on bottom you can see for the most part holding upside nq really the relentless move upside for all three indices for the week that we follow here the nq the ym and the es uh, the ES and NQ both pulling back, though, at the end of the week to the major support resistance here. Major support resistance on both the NQ and ES, but just barely holding above that weekly VWAP. Uh, on the MML levels by week's end, as the options expiry uh, by the end of the week uh, kept the market pretty much pinned to its price action on Friday. So not really being able to push up any higher. All right, so as we roll into uh, this week here, get into the charts here momentarily, VIX levels continue to uh, hold out uh, in week 16, closing out in the mid-14s, have yet to breach those upper levels above 20 or to actually fall below 10, indicating an outlier in this market at this point, which would surely show us a larger move in trend and price action in either direction open gaps remain below as the market will return to close out these levels at some point again we're talking about those daily gap charts uh with the uh, nearest here on the es at 23 15 7, 15 75 with open gaps further downside uh what will that catalyst be to take us lower who's to know at this point daily market profile appears to be balanced signifying to this trader here that markets continue to find value each day and unsure of any larger move yet to be seen. All right, so let's get into the technical charts here. Let's start with the NQ as uh, we see here on a weekly. Uh, going back to at least June of last year, we can see the NQ has been in a nice uptrend on the futures here. Uh, appreciate the fact that if you're trading the triple Q or an ETF, 
that's leveraged against the NQ in either direction. You can see the nice smooth price action again, a lot of consolidation here. Pre-election, price action took off and we still have room up here, 56.25. So keep that level in mind. So with the technical charts, with the move back upside of the NQ, and we know that the ES lagging and YM have yet to be seen, which index in the coming week will put or pull the others in sync. Will it be the NQ that will pull, uh, pull the rest upside? All right, NQ, there it is, daily range. As uh, we see here on the daily chart, only above both the 10 and the 50, 200, married, 200 period moving average down below. Keep in mind that 56.25, as we can see here, the relentless trend still holding upside, even in the pullback here on the NQ. Price action uh, touching here, tapping in week 16 here on the 50. 144 cloud here this is the 50 period moving average around 5360 and making its way back up so first level bigger picture before we even get to 5625 we'd be looking here to at least 54 68 75 and again that will get us back up to that all-time high and let's just pull that chart up one more time there it is 54 81 25 all-time highs hit there in the beginning of april all right so as we look here at the NQ, we'll take we'll we'll start with the bigger picture. We'll come down to the smaller picture as we can see now here the NQ 60 minute and the four hour. So I've taken a couple of charts. I've uh, cleaned up some of the time frames that I want to look at, and so giving you the bigger picture here, the NQ on both now an hourly and a four hour chart. Appreciate the fact that uh, before we get up to those levels like 56.25, let's go ahead pull up there it is 54 68 75 on a range chart just happens to match and when things start to match and in sync that shows not only one level of resistance but several levels of resistance so while on a four hour chart we managed to get up to that overbought level in quotes 54.49 which was a nice pullback there on friday with the options expiry we still found support here 54.29 so that's the first indicator that price action may just hold here as if we hold at the resistance up here at 54.29, which was a level that we did see intraday on both the five and the 10 minute, and we see it here on the 60 minute here at 54.29, flip a coin, we go either direction. We either come down, uh, test the lower levels here to start 53.90.75 for the week, uh, which would be major support down here, and anything lower, we'll start to look to the four hour chart back down to 53.51. Upside intraday, you know that uh, we look at a smaller time frame. It could be in either direction, but appreciate as we go into the bigger picture for the week that both sides at this point, 50% pullback could and possibly mean we go get upside to 54.68.75, maybe even up to 54.88 and higher levels for the week. So be prepared in both directions, but there's your numbers in both up and down. All right, let's jump into the ES weekly. Uh, ES here, price action again, as we see here, again on the uh, first charts that we showed there for this week's opening here, ES holding upside. Again, it's about getting back into those all-time highs. So appreciate the bigger picture on the ES as we look here on the daily pick. Got to get above that 50 period moving average. We get above that, we start to look at 23.75. Now, before we get up to 23.75, we might have a little resistance here, but good thing to see that not only on the range chart, we found support down here in the cloud uh, in this last week. So that's a first good sign that price action on the ES at this point, while you're watching an intraday pick, found support down here at 23.24, keep that in mind. Price action came up, pulled back major support resistance, holding, that's good news. We didn't break the 10 EMA yet, downside. If we do, then we start to look down to levels like 23, 12, 50, and all the way down to 22, 50, which should put us in the zone of the 200 period moving average. If we're to move upside, we want to see the break of the 50 to get us up here to 23, 75, 23, 90, and obviously all time highs. So we need to go to the smaller time frame. So keep those numbers in mind. And you can see here on the 60 minute, the four hour, there it is, 23, 59, on the four hour up to 23, 71. All right. And so revisiting up here to 23.57. So as we roll into, on the bigger picture, into week 17, we're already finding the support here and major support resistance. Any break of these levels at start on 60 minute and four hour, we'll be looking down to 23.36, 23.40, 23.41, 23.42, 23.43, 23.44, 23.45, 23.46, 23.47, 23.48, 23.49, 23.50, 23.51, 23.52, 23.53, 23.54
and 23 to 28 and the uh, numbers just slightly below that for its first level of support for the week. All right, let's uh, quickly jump in here. YM again, big picture, big picture weekly. We said the YM has been struggling a little bit here. We'll see here why, but uh, price action again has run all, most of its course here on the MML charts as a pullback on the reversal. Does that mean it's the end of the line? Not necessarily. As long as we can find support here upside at the resistance and price action move back upside to all time highs, that starts to be a good sign. At this point, we don't want to break that 20,000. We start to break 20,000. We're going to start seeing some price action migrate down here to perhaps 50% of the move up. All right, YM on a daily and a range. Again, here's the struggle. We're at the lower levels as we pull back from the highs on both a daily and a range chart. We did find support down at the oversold reversal. So good sign that right now we're holding here. But again, we got to get back above that 10 MA and that 50. We got to break through the major support. So if the YM is able to break upside, we'll be looking at 938 first level up here, 2938. But long distance on a daily to get there. Well, I think we're first going to have to break above this 625 and deal with 731 first before we could uh, 781 before we can get up to 938. But appreciate 699. 699 just slightly above the 625 here. So I think this is our first level of concern that we really need to break through. But that's our daily and our range chart. So if we get down to the uh, 60 minute four hour, but I want to go ahead and pull up a four hour chart just to appreciate, especially for ETF or just show the bigger picture on a larger time frame. Appreciate the four hour move since March on the YM since it's high here in resistance. So if there's one chart you want to watch, why not watch a four hour chart? Price action never looked back. The entry was up here at 938 and migrate down a little bit of a pullback and price action bang right this week down to 313. Nice MML move. All right, combination. There it is, 60 minute. As you can see, a lot of up and down action. We saw that price action Wednesday get that lift. We saw the Monday lift. So price action working its way through the 60 minute charts in both directions. So any short term uh, trader for swing through two, three days could have done well just off the MMLs and combo HA bars and appreciate the four hour chart as we held here downside at 313. So Again, we mentioned 625 before. That's a level I'll be watching this week. If we break the major support, we'll be looking to start downside to 313. Before we get to lower numbers, obviously we'll want to watch the 60-minute chart on the bigger time frame here at 391. All right, so big picture and all, ES as we roll into next week. Take a look at the NQ on the smaller time frame as we roll into not only Sunday, Globex, and Monday. Here on the 10-minute chart, we're looking first levels downside to see if we break that 29.75. We'll be looking down to 54.10. And then if we're able to hold here in the vicinity, just like we, uh, I'm sorry, on the NQ, if we're able to hold here, then we'll look back to the upside around 54.59 as we roll into money. Any break downside, we'll start looking to these lower support levels. Take a look at the ES again on the smaller time frame. We did find that support here on Friday, so that was good. Price action again. If it's able to hold up here, we'll want to see break of 23.51 and up to 23.59. Again, these numbers we'll look at just prior, pre-market uh, on Monday morning to see the Globex uh, reaction to the market overnight and see if we have a reset on the 10-minute charts. All right, I want to close up with the CL and the GC. Here we are, CL crude gaps uh downside we had a couple gaps we took care of this week right to the t here we could see here around 49 so crude after a major run up just pulls back still seeing if we can get up to that 55 41 a long time gap that seems to be the most viable gap to close out at this point but nearest open gaps 47 85 46 51 and 45 63 downside appreciate the bigger picture on the uh, uh crude again not as big numbers that we're going to chase to get up to 62.50 sure is going to take a lot of uh, move, but that could be the end run here for crude as uh, you see some headlines out there continuing to say that crude uh, absolutely has room to still run. So off the oversold, there it is, the pullback. Again, we continue to waffle in this range between 37.50, more like so lately around 50, which just so happens to be that major support and resistance. 
Taking a look at the daily chart as we uh, pulled back from resistance in week, uh, both weeks uh, 15 and 16. Downside here after resistance, major support, watching the 50 and the 200. Watch to the downside, 46.88 would be definitely around the uh, lower end that I'd be looking at. Here we can see last week's action, resistance down to support. So anything within the zone down here to maybe 48 before maybe we get a push back upside here to 53. And again, we'll see a reset here during the week on crude. So right now, momentum, <clears throat> tough call. Momentum is uh, after a move down, you'd think it might come back up, but the momentum back underneath the 200 Slightly concerned that crude will uh, still come down, but got to be ready in both directions. But bigger picture right now is pulling back. All right, GC weekly. Again, we continue to waffle in between the MMLs, just taking the short from the tops. The longs from the bottom seem to be working out. Major support resistance. So the momentum in this point is to the upside, just slightly above major support resistance. Let's see how that shines here after weekly. On the daily, that's the concern, is that we're already at the upper level so a pullback at this point would mean we're looking to major support resistance to 50 in the 200 and then anything break of that would be 1218 if we're looking back to the upside on gc as we continue holding this uptrend we'll look to the four hour chart to hold above here to revisit 1296 and any level above all right so the technical charts with its move back upside there it is the es and the nq and the lagging ES just behind the NQ and the struggling YM have yet to be seen which index in the coming week will pull the others in sync, like I said before. Is it enough for the NQ rally back up to pull along the ES and the YM to regain its traction above the 50 MA, or will it be the YM that's going to drag us down? I encourage you guys to check out the uh, daily 5 to 15 minute MML charts. Uh, that can offer opportunities in both directions. And keep in mind that the 60-minute charts, after pulling back uh, off the MML highs to 50% pullback, price or action, watch those 10 and 50 MAs for the week. In plain English, guys, it is decision time. All right, key events in the market this week. Let's go ahead and pull up the economic calendar. All right, so what do we got ahead? Well, we have uh, all our Red Star events, uh, tax reform announcement on Wednesday. So key in, markets might be just waiting for that. Earnings session Thursday, big announcement by the big uh, tech stocks as well. End of the month trading and our GDP on Friday. Keep in mind the French political arena uh, with its uh, votes this weekend and also North Korean instability, which at any moment could set things off as we already saw, as well as Syria. All right, so bottom line, guys, watch the price action. Watch the price action here on the ES and YM. Let me pull that chart up one more time. Watch the price action on the ES and YM to follow through to regain traction above those daily and those 50 period moving averages. Any news information on tax reform this week might be what the market needs to move in either direction in addition to any key economic data this week, especially on Thursday. Any failure here will start to look to open gaps, lower MML levels, and the 200 MA for the next levels of support. All right, making sure we've covered all the charts. Remember, it's uh one day at a time so this concludes an insight into the daily trend and technical momentum of the key futures market and feel free to stop by at tradingfibs.com check out my weekly recap including the uh, recap each day and pre-market trend posted 13 30 minutes prior to market open you can also check out any of my social media outlets to obtain more information check me out here on stock twits or you can follow me here on Twitter as well. My trading mantra, one simple strategy. It's looking for price action below the cloud or above the cloud with as many charts in sync. The 534 crossover would be great. Would love it if the 5144 is sync. If you got all that, you got a high probability setup. We're not saying 100% guarantee, but a high probability setup. And then incorporate a trade management strategy that keeps it simple. Any time frame will keep you disciplined. Again, you can find me every day on Twitter. As I mentioned before, at Trading Fibs, I always I leave the crystal ball to the experts. 
I only watching what's in front of me and on my charts and as every day leaving my buys at the door when trading. For those of you that are interested in joining us uh, with like-minded traders, feel free to uh, join us any Thursday or Friday to seek those highest probability setups. Feel free to email me, david at tradingfibs.com. You may join us to view the live charts setups as they happen in the trading day. All right. Well, guys, I uh, hope you have a great week trading. And remember, slow it down. Nothing says you have to take every single setup. Wait. Make sure you have a solid trading plan. As I said in the beginning, always manage your stop when placing a trade. Have yourselves a blue zone week wherever you may be. Have a good day. Have a good night. And good trading to you.